Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I have another reorganization, revamp and garden feature creation video for you. <laughs> me and my husband Joachim are going to be digging a hole in the ground here in front of this lovely boulder that we got put into the corner here in front of our Thuya Occidentalis Brabant bushes that are doing so well here. We want a little pond feature. Well, it's going to be a plastic rectangle bucket put into the ground, stones put around it, planted up a little bit, and there we are done. So this is just a little feature because we have our huge pond that we need to get sorted at some point, but it's not happening right now. So until that happens, we want a little something with water to be able to sit and look at, and maybe we can encourage a frog or two. <laughs> so we're just gonna get on with this and see how it turns out so we start by placing the plastic bucket on the floor so that we get the frame and then we start digging around the edge of that before we pull it away and start digging even deeper into the ground oh look at this we found oh wow this is a stone that has got crystals in it and you know how i love my crystals we can shine this up full of quartz crystal. I love it. <laughs> that will be going around the edge of the pond. So we carry on digging here and we dig the hole slightly larger than the plastic uh, bucket so that we'll be able to place it into the ground easily and then should be able to fill around the edge with soil to make sure that it is in place perfectly. It is a little bit difficult because we have a very stony uh, ground here and there are some bigger stones in the bottom here but we've got near enough more than halfway down to the level that we need to be at. So what we're thinking of doing if we can't dig any deeper then we'll just put the plastic pond in and build a stone wall around it like a rockery so that we can't see any of the edging of the plastic. So we've finally got the hole dug out and now we're going to put the plastic bucket inside fill it up with water and then fill out around the edge with soil and then build a wall of stones around the side and a stepping stone of stones inside for animals that could maybe fall in there or anything like that they need to be able to get out and also to keep the plastic in place so that the soil doesn't start pushing it up and out that's not going to be able to happen with a stone rockery around it so in we go with the plastic a little more heavy lifting. So now we've put the first stone in and we're just going to fill up the bucket with water halfway. Then we can fill around the edge with soil so we know how much it kind of presses out. And then a few more rocks inside to make a stepping stone ladder. And then we'll be ready to start building up our rockery around the edge. And I just can't wait for that part. That is going to be beautiful. So here we start by filling up with water halfway and then start filling in the gap around the edge with soil to make sure that this plastic bucket is snug in the ground and then it should all be firmly in place and look wonderful. I can't wait to see it when it's finally finished and complete but here you can see at least the bucket in the ground filled up with water now and it's on the level of the ground so that we'll be able to easily put rocks around the edge now so now we are going to put the first big stones into place so first we need to just move some of the soil out of the way so that we can uh, flatten down the ground a little bit and then we start lifting these rocks into place and we have a few discussions about where we should place each one and so forth and how it looks <laughs> everything's a bit of a discussion but that's perfect because then we get a lovely shape and design in the end and look at all these stones now they look absolutely wonderful around the edge of this huge boulder at the back and imagine this when the grass has grown out and the 
ferns have grown out around the edge and there's a little ornament and things like that. And when there are plants in the water, how wonderful all of this is going to look and how full of life it's going to be. So we finally got finished with the outline of our little pond here. And in the meantime, the battery ran out on the camera. So we carried on and put all the little rocks around the edge to hide as much of the plastic as possible. And also to keep this plastic container in the ground, we've put stones inside, or I should say rocks, small rocks inside like steps so if any animal small animal should fall in it would be able to climb out and also around the edges so we know that this container is not going to be able to be pushed up out of the soil now this was just our quick and easy approach to making a little pond feature in our garden here next to this lovely big boulder here if you want to know how to do this in a more correct fashion i suggest you go and see some pond enthusiast videos where they mark out the ground and level everything out and put sand around and you know do all these extra special wonderful things to make a proper pond and we will be doing that when we make our bigger pond but for now it wasn't necessary for this and if anything does happen to this well we can dig up this plastic container and put another one in the ground the hole is already digged out it's a small area it's not much fuss so for us, we can enjoy it during the summer. If it lasts through the winter and the plants that I'm going to put in there survive for the winter, then we'll be able to just carry on and maybe we'll have frogs and other animals that creep into the water and enjoy it as well. So the plants that I'm going to be putting in this little pond here to enjoy aquatic plant life are these beautiful plants here. They are called Cala palustris and they were cleaning out the canals out in the forest area by where we live so that the water can drain. We have a lot of small like um, trickling canals and these grow wild in those canals and they had been dumped out on the sides and left to dry and die. So I collected some of these to be able to put into this little miniature pond. So it's absolutely perfect. These plants get the most beautiful white flowers on them during the summer and they actually look like Spathophyllum wassilii. So we'll have a little look at these closer up, the leaves, before I put them into the pond. If I can get some nice ones here. So here they are, Callus palustris. They're otherwise known as bog arum. And as I said, they get the most beautiful white flowers on them. They have lovely heart-shaped kind of leaves, a lovely green color and beautiful root systems and so forth. So these are going to be absolutely perfect in there and should survive all summer and winter into the next season and come up again. They're perennial plants, they're hardy, and this should be fantastic. So all I'm going to do is just plonk them in the water. They will figure it out themselves. They will write themselves up. They will grow their roots down and they will spread out nicely in this little pond I have here. And if they get too many, well, you just clear them out and put them somewhere else. <laughs> so let's just get these in there to add that little extra touch now. So simply does it, I'm just going to plonk them in all around, as I said, and let them figure it out themselves. Just like that. <laughs> that isn't one. <laughs> in they go. I have these in another container and I've done this before. So I know that when I put them in like this, they will just write themselves up and their leaves will be facing the sun in no time. They'll look beautiful. Oh, I am just loving doing this. So there we go, that's it done. I already look like I have a half established little pond here and the grass will write itself out around the pond as well here. And I'm thinking of planting some more ferns around the back of this boulder to make it all look very natural. But as I said, the grass is going to grow right up to the edge here. We'll keep it trimmed and just enjoy looking in this little hole. And I hope one day very soon We'll see some little frogs hopping around in here as well. So before I finish, I just want to give you a closer look of all these plants in the water now, so you can see how wonderful they look. Well, I ended up actually not filming a close-up of the pond the day I filmed my video. So I have raced forward in time again. This video was filmed on the 1st of June, 2021, and today, this clip I'm showing you now is from the 23rd of June, 2021. So 23 days later, 
and you can already see how wonderfully these bog aran are standing up in this little pond and loving their new life here. And the grass around the edge hasn't started growing back yet because it's been so extremely hot, 32 degrees here in Sweden, and very, very dry. So the new grass hasn't been able to bounce back yet, but it will as soon as it starts getting wetter, and that's fine. I know that's going to happen. But look how wonderful this little pond is looking already in 23 days. I've planted fern plants around the sides and around the back, and they are also in a period of recuperation, so they will be looking much better and much thicker next season, but I'll enjoy them as they are for now. And to give you more perspective of the pond and where it is in the garden here, you can see it's in this corner of the botanical garden area, and we see it all the way down through our courtyard garden and all the way down through our garden of new beginnings because we have a long stretch where there's grass here. So this wonderful boulder and now this lovely little pond can be seen from far back in the garden. And you can see even from our annex here, we can see our pond and it's absolutely wonderful. So if we race back in, we can see that everything is doing very, very well. I've put a lovely figure of a frog here. It looks so cute next to all of the ferns and the boulder and the rocks around the front. And I've only had to fill a little bit of water in this pond actually once. It hasn't started evaporating quickly or anything like that, like I was afraid it maybe would because it's so small, but no, it's been fine. And these plants are just looking amazing. Look at them. They are loving it. And there are so many insects buzzing around this little pond already. And I know that it's going to be full of life. And I hope little tadpoles next year. <laughs> but this was just to give you a little quick sneak preview into the future while I had the chance. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing these plants closer up and our little project that we've done today. We've had a lot of fun making this little pond today and it just shows you how easy it is to go and make a little pond of your own in your garden. Get yourself a plastic container, dig a hole, but make sure that you weigh it down with rocks inside and around the edges to keep the plastic pot in place. Because as I said before, if you don't do that, the soil will start pushing into the sides of the plastic pot and it will push it up. So eventually it will be right up above the surface level. So you need to keep it weighed down if you're not going to be making yourself a much more advanced pond, then as I said, go and have a look at what the experts do. <laughs> but anyway, all I want to say is thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye. Thank you.